Bill was an intriguing man, yeah. just an intriguing man. He, uh, I spent some time with him, just did an amazing job. He understood the rock performers. Uh, he really prided himself on putting on a concert that was safe. Mm -hmm. Security was the most important thing to him and traffic entering and getting out and he would have people uh, stay after concerts if, if that didn't work out. He uh, wanted, the, the, he wanted the, the customer, the patron, to have an enjoyable time and come back. That was his goal. And he did everything for fan comfort. He had security, but if there was a problem, the security would isolate the problem so it didn't spill over. Mm -hmm. People didn't get hurt at Bill's mm -hmm. concerts. Uh, it was very important. Bill walked the concert when no concert was going on. Bill was walking around Shoreline. I forgot what the concert was, and you know nobody was going to come up to him. And I saw him, and I went over and, and Bill, how you doing? And I'm not doing too well. And I said, what's the matter? And he said, well, he said, I'm sure you've heard. Uh, I can't believe it. Um, uh, Mick Jagger has decided to have uh, uh, that guy from Canada. I forgot his name. I think it's Cole do his tour and it's only doing that because he's going to make more money. It's only money with him and he said I don't understand that. I gave, I did their tours, I did a great job. And so here we are people walking around, so everybody's looking at us and nobody's going to come over and say anything and we're in the middle of uh, our outside at uh, Shoreline, outside the main uh, venue and uh, or the main amphitheater uh, inside the grounds but outside where the shows are going on and I'm talking with Bill Graham about uh, how bad uh, he's been treated by Mick Jagger and we're, uh, he's commiserating about that and, uh, and he just kept saying, he said, I don't understand. And he said, I flew back with Mick after we had our meeting and we went to somewhere in the Caribbean. They went to a special meeting and then I, we took the jet and, and I was with Mick and I, I, at the end I said, Mick, I mean, you know, we're friends. Look at the quality I did for you and everything and you're just doing this because of more money mm -hmm. and, and that really bothered Bill. Mm -hmm. and then I had the, you know, the meetings I related with Bill. Um, but Shoreline, so how, how did this uh, Well, and, and then in Shoreline, Shoreline's a great story. The Shoreline Amphitheater, uh, the, Bill Graham had an informal monopoly in the Bay Area, but he didn't have a formal monopoly. Anybody could put on a show at the Oakland Coliseum. Anybody could put on a show at the uh, arena there, or at the Greek, or in Palo Alto, or anywhere. He didn't have his own venue, and what he needed was his own venue, because if he had his own venue, then he had a monopoly in the Bay Area, because if he had a venue everybody wanted to play, mm -hmm. then in order to play that venue, they had to play the other venues and Bill did the promotion for everything. So he could have a show at his own venue, he could have a show or two at, at Oakland, he could do one in Sacramento, he could do one in San Jose, he could do one in San Francisco. It gave him control. And they were looking and looking around and one of the senior people on his staff, Bill, Danny Schur, uh, S-C-H-E-R, was uh, from the peninsula and was looking around and he came upon uh, Shoreline Park in Mountain View and Danny uh, talked uh, with uh, people, talked with Bill, said this was the thing to do, Nick to do it, and nobody knew anything about amphitheaters. So uh, I think Nick suggested, and maybe Steve Welcome, the office manager, suggested that Danny uh, work with uh, Bill's attorney, with Dick Green, to work on trying to put this deal together. So we began the negotiations, Danny uh, Bruce Leedstrand, who was the uh, city manager at Mountain View, in-house counsel at Mountain View, Pete Bulens, B-U-L-E-N-S, uh, Nick and I would, uh, pardon me, Danny and I would meet, and then when, it, when we had something, it, who owned it? Uh, sure, uh, the city of Mountain city View, yeah. okay. and it was in the redevelopment area. Oh. So, and they had created this whole park, mm -hmm. and they, there are other things out there. Mm -hmm. So we had these negotiations and then Danny would report back to Nick Klinos and ultimately to Bill and then there would be hearings and I think Bill appeared at one hearing, Danny would always beat the hearings, I would go and sit in the background, Nick might go and we just listen and the thing progressed and progressed and progressed. You get bids, start in on the construction, 
Uh, Shoreline is going to kick in some money. They have some redevelopment money they can kick in. And we're talking with the banks. And we're negotiating with the bank. Construction is going on. We're all, Bill has signed the contracts to build this thing. And we're waiting for the bank, which has said they were going to fund it. It's Wells Fargo Bank. So on uh, one day, and I forgot the day of the week, it doesn't matter, I get a phone call from the loan officer and he said, Dick, I'm sorry to tell you that our loan committee has uh, rejected the loan. And I said, you know, I, Frank, you didn't need a phone for me to communicate with this guy because we're midway in construction. Mm -hmm. Bill's on the hook for, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 million dollars and uh, we, don't have, we don't have any money. And and we talked and talked, and uh, they, uh, the bank was firm. They had certain requirements. We couldn't meet the requirements. So uh, by the time I got off the phone with the bank, I'm calling. Um, I can't get Nick. Uh, Nick was somewhere. I get Danny. I tell Danny, uh, our deal is done. You know, we don't have any money. I don't know what we're going to do. We both agree we have to meet with Bruce Leedstrand. I, I call Bruce's office and we get a meeting for the next morning at 11 o'clock in Mountain View. And I'm losing sleep over this thing. I mean, uh, I, I didn't sleep very well that night until I finally figured out why, why should I be losing sleep? It's not my money. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, so were there other banks to go to or did you think they were? That was it. We had tried every okay. bank. They were the only ones who had any interest at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I show up in Bruce Leedstrand's office. He has no idea why we're coming down to meet him. I show up promptly at 11 o'clock. I walk in, no Danny. And he looks at me and says, Dick, you look terrible. What's the matter? I'm looking around, no Danny. And I explain. Our, he said, well, you told me we had a loan. I said, yeah, we did. But we can't meet their conditions. And he said, well, what do you mean we can't meet their conditions? He said, well, they want the city of Mountain View to guarantee the loan. Mm -hmm. And Bruce looks at me and he says, if we did that, we might as well loan the money. And I said, now you're talking, Bruce. <laughs> Danny came in about 10 minutes later. By that time, Bruce and I were down the path of the city of Mountain View making a loan of about nine or $10 million. Mm -hmm. Bill put up, had some money up and he raised some money from Steve Wozniak mm -hmm deal we made with Steve Wozniak was really hilarious, in my opinion. He, I forgot how much he put up, $3 million, I think. Great attorney at Wilson Sonsini, but it was negotiated by a guy I knew. And all that guy wanted was box seats. Mm -hmm. And so he got to box seats, and we did that. And then Bill made a request of a longstanding friend of his by the name of Ann Getty. And they had this long-standing relationship, friendship, and she put a million dollars up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And pardon me, pardon me, that she was the one represented by a long-standing friend of mine, not, not, not uh, Wozniak. Okay. Woz, Woz wanted some uh, a box, and so did Ann Getty, and they got something. So we cobbled this thing together, and we were still short money. Uh, then I think it was Danny who came up with the idea of getting a sponsor for the amphitheater, and Pepsi-Cola sponsored it, and so I negotiated a deal with Pepsi-Cola, mm -hmm. and we got their entire sponsorship fee up front, which I think was $8 million, and when we put it all together, we had enough money mm -hmm. to build the amphitheater. We ended up getting it open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The amphitheater was an enormous success.